In his State of the Union address, President Obama renewed his criticism of the Supreme Court ruling, saying he hopes Congress passes legislation, quote, that helps to lead, uh, to, to, who, that helps to right this wrong. President Obama delivered his first State of the Union address Wednesday night. The president did not lay out any far-reaching new pro policies, but instead used the occasion to call on Congress to move forward on issues already on the agenda, including economic recovery, health care reform, and education. A full two-thirds of the president's 70-minute address was devoted to the economy, the central theme of which was job creation. Obama talked through a series of steps his administration hopes to take to aid middle-class families and spur job growth. As expected, Obama proposed a three-year freeze on discretionary government spending, threatening to use his veto to achieve it. 2011, we are prepared to freeze government spending for three years. <laughs> spending related to our national security, Medicare, Medicaid, and Social Security will not be affected. But all other discretionary government programs will. Like any cash-strapped family, we will work within a budget to invest in what we need and sacrifice what we don't. And if I have to enforce this discipline by veto, I will. I know that some in my own party will argue that we can't address the deficit or freeze government spending when so many are still hurting. And I agree, which is why this freeze won't take effect until next year when the economy is stronger. That's how budgeting works. But understand, understand, if we don't take meaningful steps to rein in our debt, it could damage our markets, increase the cost of borrowing, and jeopardize our recovery, all of which would have an even worse effect on our job growth and family incomes. Obama went on to urge action on energy legislation, linking success to the creation of new jobs. He called for construction of new nuclear power plants, new offshore oil drilling, and passage of climate change legislation. Obama also challenged Congress to supersede the Supreme Court's ruling last week that allows corporations to spend unlimited amounts of money to elect and defeat candidates. The president also vowed to end the military's don't ask, don't tell policy and urged Congress to pass legislation opening the military fully to gay men and lesbians. For a response to President Obama's first State of the Union address, we're joined by two guests. Noam Chomsky joins us on the telephone from his home in Massachusetts. Chomsky is Institute Professor Emeritus of Linguistics at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, where he taught for over half a century. He's the author of dozens of books. His most recent is Failed States, The Abuse of Power and the Assault on Democracy. And joining us here in Park City, Utah, is Naomi Klein, journalist and author. Her latest book is The Shock Doctrine, The Rise of Disaster Capitalism. We welcome you both to Democracy Now! Uh, Noam Chomsky, let's begin with you in Massachusetts. Your response to President Obama's State of the Union address. Uh, well, <clears throat> uh, one doesn't expect to get much content from a State of the Union address. So, and. There wasn't very much, but that's normal. Uh, there were some proposals that made some sense. Uh, they weren't very definite, but uh, yes, it's a good idea to put Americans to work building the infrastructure of tomorrow, uh, of railroads, uh, but not the interstate highway system. He said that. I don't think that's a good idea. Uh, the uh, It's a good idea to take... Thirty billion of the money Wall Street banks have repaid, and they use it to help community banks uh, uh, to give credit to small businesses and so on. Uh, it's uh, it's true that we should export more of our goods, but he didn't mention the way that has to be done to do that, namely uh, uh, lowering the inflated dollar, which the financial industries aren't going to like. Uh, so I don't think it'll happen. Uh, on freezing government spending, uh, it's uh, it's not it's certainly not it's it's partially but not totally in accord with uh, the public will. So, in fact, the recent most recent poll I've seen by Pew on uh, uh, people's priorities, uh, the highest 
for, for increase in spending, by far the highest, over two-thirds, was for education. Well, that's being frozen. The next was veteran be- veterans' benefits. That's frozen. The next is health care, which is partially frozen. Uh, uh, environmental protection, uh, not there. Energy, not there. Uh, when you get down to about, I think, it's the 11th or so, you get to military defense, which is increasing. We call it defense. Uh, anti-terrorism defense is 13th. That's increasing. Uh, so, by and large, the priorities are, uh, uh, I wouldn't say the opposite of, but not consistent with the uh, uh, the uh, 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 spending uh, uh, block. Uh, the it's a, it's a good idea to revitalize community colleges uh, uh, to uh, uh, cut back uh, to to modify the student loan program so it doesn't go through banks. Uh, uh, the child care tax credit makes some sense. Uh, these are all. Uh, it, it's also good to reverse the Supreme Court ruling, but he didn't say which was a horrible ruling. But he didn't indicate how we should go ahead with that. Uh, and uh, 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 most of it is the kind of rhetoric you expect in a State of the Union address. There were a few uh, scattered things like this. Could be sensible if there's if there's some way to carry them out. Naomi Klein, uh, right now, you, well, you just flew into Park City, Utah, just before President Obama's State of the Union address. Your reaction to it? Well, I mean, we knew the spending freeze was was, was going to come, uh, but to me, it's it's really striking. I think what this moment represents is the decision, um, which we all feared would come, to pass the bill on from saving Wall Street, from saving the elites of this country from their own mess, a bill worth trillions of dollars to regular people in need in this country. I mean, that's what a spending freeze really means, and we have to look at it in the context of the the debt crisis that is occurring at the state level. There's deficit, uh, huge deficits being run up. California is the most dramatic example, but you're already seeing how students are facing things like 30 percent tuition increases, women's shelters are being closed. So, you know, when the president says free spending, that's saying to the states, we're not going to help you, we're not going to bail you out. So this is really, this to me all comes back to the top-down bailout uh, that should never have taken place in the first place. The decision that was made uh, to throw, uh, to tax payer dollars at the banks, at the elites, no, spr- st- uh, no strings attached, not to help the people losing their jobs, losing their homes. Um, and now, now the bill is being passed on, because the debt crisis, the private sector debt crisis, uh, which started this, the, the, the banks racking up these huge debts, um, was never solved. It was just moved. It was just moved to the public coffers. Uh, and now Obama is—this is, 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 is a this is a, a Hoover move. This is a Herbert Hoover move. And I think we have to say very clearly, he is not FDR. And, you know, in the, in the spirit of Howard Zinn, um, who passed yesterday, I, I, I keep thinking, you know, what would he say about, about the State of the Union? And I think he would tell us to refuse to pay this bill, that we need a debtor's revolt. Well, 